Alright. See. <clears throat> I talk a certain way when I feel the spirit on me. Like I can't I wish I could really explain this to people. When I feel a dimension of God's presence and spirit on me in a way that I feel it there's a truth on that presence in that presence in that cloud that's resting on me and I discern it and I just go off in that you see what I'm saying mm. that's when I feel what I feel that's why I grab the recorder sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna feel because I don't know how I don't know the depth of that until I start talking you see there is a biblical model this is why I say what I say about some of these ministers on YouTube and this is what I. My eyes. Thank this you. is what I say about. I mean, this is not just YouTube ministers, but just pastors, people in ministry. Period. There is a biblical model of the spirit, and it's and it's 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 the way of humility. You know, mm -hmm. the scripture said to submit ye one to another in the fear of the Lord. Submit to the elders, for God gives grace to the humble. Okay. Um, God doesn't just give his grace to anybody, but there has to be somebody of the spirit that there's a accountability with. The, 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 if you have humility with God, it's going to rest with, with, with the church somewhere. And I don't mean the local church. I mean apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. And I'm saying that because not all apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists have church buildings. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you look at Paul for an example... He was preaching on the side of the road. He couldn't preach in a synagogue where the church is back in, you know, his days. They preach out of their houses. And then, you know, of course, they met in the streets. And anyways, my point is this. There is a biblical model for just going out and preaching. Okay. There is a biblical model for just going out and preaching. And the reason why I say that is because you have people preaching scriptures and stuff on preaching even on end time stuff and they're wrong about what they're saying and they will even talk about people who take the word out of context and you just really got to hear it's their way of trying to convince people that what they got is really in context and it's really hearing from the lord and they'll talk about that while they're teaching something that is not from the lord or in the proper context of the scriptures okay so i say that to say this here there's a biblical model that one has to preach by and the reason why I say that because I talked about the humility of an elder or somebody. There's a reason for it. There is a humility of somebody. What does that have to do with, what does humility have anything to do with submission to somebody, an elder or somebody of the faith, have anything to do with preaching and getting accuracy? Well, because you have a fivefold ministry that God has set in the church of, of a body of believers, of people, people who are saved and baptized in Christ. You see what I'm saying? Of apostles, pastors, pro prophets, teachers, and evangelists. You have to understand something. That revelation, rhema really comes as a gift of the Spirit to reveal scriptures through a foundation of people. Apostles and prophets. Okay? Apost That's why it was <coughs> the apostles and prophets that wrote the scriptures, not pastors, teachers, and evangelists and bishops. You see what I'm saying? And, well, the Bible's completed today. Yeah, but you still need living epistles, men and women today, that can re-resurrect what Paul said in the Spirit to give the expression of the Spirit, the person of the Spirit who dwells in someone who was chosen and sanctified and sent by God, who has been who has been faithful to their covering, who has been faithful to that anointing because there is a special anointing and specific apostolic prophetic men who are the founders of the church, the spiritual church of God, because it says when it gives a list of fivefold ministry, it says in Ephesians chapter 4, when it talks about we're founded on Apostle Prophet Jesus Christ, the holy habitation to the God, uh, a holy habitation, that we're like a building firmly fit, framed together. Firmly you know, fitted. Firmly fitted. Uh, firmly fitted. And if you keep reading, it says through the Spirit. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's very important. And it's so sad because there's coming a church that's, and there are churches that are firmly fitted the right way. Very few, but they're out there. Because there's a biblical model in preaching. Because when you're under that biblical model, see, Paul got saved, started preaching instantly, right? But if you look at the book of Acts, he was preaching as Paul. 
He was preaching as Saul before Paul. Mm -hmm. And he was preaching where? At the church of Antioch. Acts chapter 13, it says that Paul was found at the church of Antioch with prophets. Mm -hmm. Not pastors. No, we do need pastors. But it says prophets <coughs> at the church of Antioch. They laid hands on Paul. Eventually, they sent them out. See, Paul preached before he was sent out, but he had a covering. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He had a place of submission where he could humble his spirit and be humble under prophets and people. Okay? They can chastise him or say something. Because remember, Ananias came by the spirit to rebuke him or to correct him or to restore him. You see what I'm saying? And to bring him back his sight. And for him to receive, he had to go through a brokenness of humility where God had to change him through the laying on of another brother's hands. You see what I'm saying? And then he was still sent to the church of Antioch for a certain time. Paul writes about this in his epistles in Galatians when he says that we're under the tutors and governors of the church. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 that we're under the tutors and governors of the church until the appointed time of the Father. Paul goes on to say in verse 19, concerning him being one of those pillars, I must travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. That's the appointed time. A lot of Christians are born again, but Christ ain't fully formed in them yet. See, Paul was submitted about, he was preaching under the ministry and influence of the church of Antioch until Christ was formed in him. Then he was sent out to be independent, even though he had John as his pillar. You see what I'm saying? He was sent out by twos. It's like Jesus sent him out. He was sent out to have his own ministry now. Now he can have his own ministry. Why am I saying that? Because you have people on YouTube. You have people everywhere. Even got a little bit of money enough to start a little church on the side. Who don't? Who never had original covering of anointing of brotherhood uh, that they were faithful with at one time. And Paul said in the stewards of ministry, one has to be found faithful. There are too many unfaithful men trying to preach this thing who have no idea what it's like to submit their spirit under a mother of a, or a father who was saved or a pastor who was who could father or somebody that can birth them out greatness. God gave us a fivefold ministry to do what? If you read, if you go back, man and women of God, if you go back, God gave a fivefold ministry to do what? birth a church that was already born again into a greater dimension that they were born into because it says that he gave apostles prophets pastors teachers evangelists to bring <laughs> perfection until we all come into the unity into the full statue of christ till we all come into unity together you see too much independence going on too much garbage going on out there what does that have to do with preaching right because you can't preach right with that corrupt spirit. The Holy Spirit, when he sees that proper chain of command at the Father. Now remember, when the woman came to Jesus saying, Can you put my son at your left and, 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 and my other son at your right? Remember, Jesus said, That is up to my heavenly Father. So it's the Father who chooses chain of command. The Holy Spirit is looking to see, Oh, Jesus, if you are where the Father puts you. But he also told he also told them that they didn't even know what they were asking for. Uh, yeah, because we don't know what we get, what we're in, what we get ourselves into. When what we do we what? ask things like that, that it's a chain of like you said, it's a chain of authority. It's a right. Chain of, if you're about if your you're father's asking, business, you're gonna. First of all, if she was about the father's business, she would have came at him like that because he had to he had to change her mentality. And at that moment in time, he had to change her mentality and his apostles' mentality. He says, he says to be hot. You know, he starts talking about you know to be great, you got to be low. You know, because he because he, he looked at the woman and said, "Are you willing to drink? Are you willing to um, a drink of the cup?" And he's like, okay, yeah, okay, okay, that you will. But to set up my my father, in other words, it's like it's like it's like he's putting him in check when he says that. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're about the father's business, you will know. See, that's what I'm talking about. When you are truly about the father's business and you are truly seeking God with everything, and you're not trying to be distracted, and you're serious about your walk, you are going to know. And I'll show it to you in the Bible, Cornelius. 
the Bible says that Cornelius, before he caught the Holy Ghost and fullness and knew anything about Jesus, the Bible says that his prayers went up like a like a parade, like a perpetual nomama in the heaven, like a parade in the heaven, so to speak. So much that his ear, his prayer opened up your ears. So much that he heard the angel say, "Send two men to Joppa, a man named Peter. He will show you what you need to be done." He picked up who his covering was in the spirit. <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm saying? He picked up who his covering was in the spirit. And when, and when the apostle Peter came, they called the Holy Ghost. But it wasn't enough to receive it from Apostle Paul or Peter because Paul still needed to write the epistles to the church. They weren't about salvation. They were past salvation. <laughs> Those epistles were letters of the Spirit that would chastise them where they're at and get them back off the flesh because they started out in the Spirit, but they end up walking in the flesh with this thing, trying to do it about their own way. And Paul had to keep coming back with a rhema or something that he, uh, he uh, like Jesus did with the lady by the well. He had to keep touching them in the Spirit to get them back in the Spirit, get their eyes focused on Christ because he told them in Ephesians that you have not so learned Christ. You have not learned to put on Christ yet. Okay? Because in that same chapter, chapter 4 in Ephesians, chapter 6, he's still talking about it because he's telling them about putting, he's still giving keys on how to put on Christ because he's talking about the armor of God, which is the presence of Christ and the word of Christ. He's still trying to give them prophetic keys. You see what I'm saying? Paul was very deep. So my point is this. When you have that right covering and that right connection, the Holy Spirit, you you will birth, you will have that true humility. The Holy Spirit will birth the true accuracy of the Word in you to where to where you'll be able to teach heavy doctrine and accuracy. And then you could talk about how the Holy Ghost led and guided you. So you don't have to convince people that, that people need to be led and guided to the Holy Ghost and, and you got it all if you really got the Holy Ghost. Because once people hear you under the Holy Ghost, they don't have to wonder whether or not there's been a prophet in their midst. <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm saying? I'm feeling a jolt here in the Holy Ghost. This is so true. I'm saying that because so many people are leaving their pastor. So many people are leaving the uh, the prophet that God sent them because, uh, yeah, he's powerful, but he don't really have a big following and they want a big following and they don't really need him because they think that they can go all by themselves. Man, that's a wrong spirit. And there's just too many people with that, that self-agenda spirit. Man, without a true, sincere hunger for God, if there's one ounce of self vain glory in you if there's one ounce of i want my own pulpit and i want ministry i want god to bless if there's one ounce of that in you that's greater than trying to please god and worship god man he won't let it happen and if he lets it happen you have begun the era of demonic doctrines and seducing spirits i guarantee it this is a profound prophetic word from the lord from the spirit because i know honey i know what happened when, when the pastor wasn't in the spirit anymore? You'd go and find you another pastor. You'd go find Jesus, right? Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You would follow those pastors as long as the Holy Ghost was with them. But when he wasn't with them no more, where did you go? Time to go on to the next one. As And the scripture talks about being led out with peace. So there are scriptures on everything I'm saying. But there is a biblical order. And it's even found in the New Testament. For an example, the burden of... when uh, With Moses... When leading the children of Israel to the promised land, the Bible says that the burden of the people were too great upon Moses. That God came down and took the anointing that was upon Pose, Moses, Moses, took the anointing that was upon Moses and put it on seventy-one elders. So, mm. and and two of those elders went out in the camp and prophesied. You see what I'm saying? Yes. See, so the spirit of heaviness, the spirit of of the anointing of heaviness to preach in-depth good solid teaching comes <laughs> where there's two three gathered in his name when you're under that right moses when you found your your real pastor your real prophet your real evangel whoever this person may be does he have a moses anointing a moses spirit but well, when you get around him something greater takes place in the spirit on your life greater than you just you and the lord by yourself now, don't get me wrong, you can take that back to the secret place as long as you're connected to that guy. Faithfulness. 
they had the anointing to preach and to serve because they were up under Moses' ministry. Do you see? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Because it shows a picture of faith. It's all about serving other your brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, I'm going to go out and serve. Oh, my so-and-so ministries is the name of my ministry. And we're just going to go on and get out of here. We're going forward in our ministry. No, you're not. I had an opportunity to have a few churches and a few places. We both did. But we didn't settle for the false teaching, did we? And it's been 10, 15. Uh, for me, it's been 12 years later. You've been in the faith a lot longer. My wife here, she got 30 years on me. And the faith been saved most of her life. But my point is this. You didn't settle for something God didn't want you to have. You see? See, if you look at the word in the scriptures, speaking of Moses, Moses couldn't enter in the promised land. Because he struck the rock instead of speaking to it. <laughs> Moses did not enter in because he didn't believe oh wait a minute he did believe no god said because you didn't obey the word believe in the in the hebrew means to obey the american translation the american dictionary of believing is the believing of or biblically if you if you believe in god you will obey ultimately obey god See, he could enter into the promised land because he disobeyed God and smiting the rock instead of speaking to the rock. And the people saw when that happened. They're like, wow, that guy's anointed. But it was teaching the people that it was okay to be obedient, disobedient and still get a result. Oh, Jesus. How many people are like that in their ministry? I'm anointed. I got the gifts of the Holy Ghost and it's without repentance. I'm going to go forth and God's going to bless whatever I'm going to do. No. Don't do it. People listening to this right now saying, Vinny, you're pretty good, man. You should be a pastor right now. Or you should be this. You should be that. No, I'm still sitting at home not doing it. Because God didn't send me yet. Oh, Jesus. But he told me to do YouTube videos. That he led me to do. And I know he didn't. <sighs> we need to be faithful to the pastors that God has placed under us. And there's not many pastors left. They're all falling away. So many of them. So if you got a pastor who's got the Holy Ghost for real, you better pray for him. Then he keeps it and stays away from that money gospel. Or maybe your, your pastor is a prophet who's a janitor or somebody who's really got the good word in them. Don't be deceived by buildings and corp church corporations because most 90% of those church corporations, especially the, under the 501c3 beast, beast system, <laughs> spirit spell, that's a sellout spirit, and that's that's being dominated by the government, not the Holy Ghost. The God ain't pleased with them. So if you under a ministry that's a 50C3, they automatically classify every church under 503C3, whether or not they're incorporated or not. But if if they're if they are incorporated under the 501C3 as a corporation with the government, then get out. It ain't the Holy Ghost. Come out from her, my people. <laughs> Anyways. I'm just, man, some crazy stuff, man. I've been doing some videos, and I see somebody on YouTube doing some videos. And the same things I just did, opposing what I said, it's like, man, are they doing this purposely against me? But, man, how many times have we heard pastors preaching, and we felt like they were talking about us? That's a seducing spirit. I confronted the pastor one time. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I believed him. That's how strong these seducing spirits are. They don't know they're doing it. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs>